Hello everyone, welcome back to Saturn Slam Review, talking that NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool. Uh, Get out of the pool, they put some black in it. <laughs> this is black dye. Glad you clarified. It sounded like pre-integration Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> This pool's looking a little urban. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this was the first ever uh, takeover for NXT UK. Uh, it succeeded in continuing up to the legacy of good takeover shows. In January. Yet to be disappointed by a takeover. Um, this was a fine show. There were some good things on it. There were some less good things on it, but overall pretty good. There wasn't anything on it that sucked. There were a couple matches maybe that were disappointing. Mm -hmm. One match that I would say I was a little disappointed in. Only because I expected more. Right. Um, I would describe it as... This was a plan that needed to be executed with a lot of precision. I just, you know, it was less about the stuff on the card than it was about this was the first takeover in NXT UK. And they had to be like, this is what we can do. This is what a card could look like. Look at all these different matches we can have. Yeah, they we uh, can... they uh, executed it well. I'm... I don't know if I'm more interested in watching the TV now. Um, but uh, I'll definitely watch the takeovers. Yeah. This was pretty good. This was worth my time, I'd say. I think what this accomplished for me was, you know, um, I if I end up, I finish my NXT for the week, I can just hang around. I'll be like, okay, yeah, maybe I'll watch a, a couple matches on this card. Maybe it'll suck me in for a little while and yeah. I just keep watching for a while. I'll just and I'll watch the main event or something. Yeah. Um, it's... Yeah, so we uh, kicked it off with tag team action. Team of Zach Gibson and James Drake facing off against Mustache Mountain in a match that as soon as I... I was watching the entrances of this match, and I'm like, really? You can't put the belts on Mustache Mountain. That it just doesn't doesn't really work because um because uh they already are like an established name and if you to me they didn't it didn't seem like Gibson and uh, again I don't watch the TV week to week but it didn't seem like Gibson and Drake were really on the same level so I'm like if they don't win here they're just like dead. You've killed them dead. Right. Um, I can fill you in a little bit. I watched some of the show, so I know a little bit about what's going on. Uh, one, this felt a little more American than what I had seen on the show. The, you know, the show is a little more subdued, a little less like things exciting, happening, loud. Right. It's more kind of like professional football. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get in there. I'm going to get him. That's the accent from nowhere. You can't place that accent. It's mysterious. <laughs> it does not exist in a place. Um, yeah, but the whole thing about the tag team was the GM basically said, we're having a tag team belt. Buddy off. <laughs> Find a buddy and go right. tag team match. So they didn't have any established. The, the, the belt came before the teams. The teams were not, you know, right. made. And then there's like, we got to have a belt for this. So... Mustache Mountain has the advantage of having worked together for quite a little bit. And Tyler Bate, especially, I felt, just stole the show. Yes. Uh, this was every stole Mustache match, at least. Mountain uh, match ever and where you come away very impressed by Tyler Bate and wondering why Trent Seven is a wrestler. <laughs> it's just like... A just such a contrast. I got I, really I, frustrated by Trent Seven in this match because he was like super Cena levels of unbeatable at times. Mm -hmm. And 
I was over. I already have this like distaste for Trent Seven's, uh, you know, durability from that match against the Undisputed Era, where he was in that like knee bar for 15 minutes. Oh yeah, that was that was a little black mark. Yeah, and then there. Was... I liked him a little better in this. He was better so this... than he's. I'll say this: the the they should keep this attire because it was far more flattering for uh, both guys. I think. I think Tyler Bate looked a little less like a twelve year old, and uh, Trent Seven looked a little less like a lard ass. I think they should keep these <laughs> these tights. Flattering. Yeah, that's uh, fair. Yeah, but this was the best match on the show. Uh, we kicked it off strong. Um, this went every bit of like thirty minutes. It felt, um, mm-hmm. and uh, they just traded moves back and forth. They kicked out of fucking everything, uh, including this one spot that. This is where I kind of was like, really, Trent Seven. This is going to be a thing, or this was part one. It continued later in part two. Uh, they hit the Helter Skelter into a 450 combo and got a close near fall out of it. Uh, I thought that would have been a great way to finish, but Trent Seven had other ideas. (laughs) And uh, this was followed up by a spot where Trent Seven found himself in a submission hold for another inordinate amount of time. And uh, Tyler Bate also found himself in the similar hold was able to power out because he is big strong boy and uh he uh basically muscled up uh i believe gibson on his shoulders for a death valley driver i or it was drake i came away very impressed with james drake in this match i think he's mm-hmm. he's pretty good take teams a little a uh, little lopsided you gotta even them out um but yeah yeah uh, eventually... great way to start Yeah, eventually uh, Drake and Gibson picked up the win as they really needed to to legitimize themselves in the eyes of the casual fan, such as myself. And uh, I think they did that. I was very, very... Came away impressed. And uh, I I look forward to more uh, more tag teams. I think uh, Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel are going to be featured a little more regularly on... uh, NXT UK uh, moving forward. Mm-hmm. So that's just another put team. Put them where they yeah. need. Yeah. Uh, I would give this a four. And also, shout out as we go in here, uh, I want to give like a nice four stars to the crowd because they weren't obnoxious, but they were nice and hot. They were going. Yes. They sang. I enjoyed that. A lot of singing. That's a very UK crowd thing. Sometimes I like it. Sometimes I don't so much. So uh, much. Although they have given us some of the greatest chants ever, including the Dakota Kai chant, which is like a top chant in the history of chants. Uh, yeah, and I would put, it's not, not quite the sauce. I would just sprinkle seasoning over this <laughs> entire show. <laughs> We're just going to become a cooking show now, boys. Uh, yeah, everyone I felt was... They picked everyone they put on this card had a lot of energy, at least in my opinion. I saw it. I felt like they had a lot of energy. Uh, yeah, they definitely was just not as much there. Everyone worked very hard. I will. You can't say anything different than that. Everyone worked very hard, and for the most part, they worked pretty well. Uh, there was definitely some some things they weren't so crisp especially in the main event with a very embarrassing botch followed by an even more embarrassing botch of the same spot oh shoot i got to i got to remember that i feel i could i could sense it in the cards there but when when you say it i will probably like oh yeah 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 but right now it's currently evading me so we'll keep yeah. it as a spoiler for later so uh, the match next was supposed to be Jordan Devlin versus Travis Banks, but they uh, shot an angle before the show where Devlin took out Banks' knee and uh, was not sure if he was going to be able to compete. He ended up coming out. Uh, the bell never officially rang, and he got his knee injured again, so he was uh, he was 
wheeled out, not wheeled out, he left under his own power, but he was helped to the back, and uh, Johnny Saint and the assistant GM, whose name evades me at this moment in time. No, they're no William Regal, not yet. They, no. Their name has not been burned to my mind, but they do have the preparedness of Daddy Regal, yes. chess master. They had anticipated Jordan Devlin's uh, actions, so they secured for him a backup opponent, and that man was none other than Finn Balor, who got uh, a monster reaction, as yeah, you I, would expect. I fucking popped in the, in the couch. I was like, oh my god, this is perfect! Like, because he's also really popular, so he gets, you know, what a, what a yeah. great get. So uh, Finn Balor wrestled his mini-me here, and it was, uh, it was pretty good. Um, not the most exciting Finn Balor match I've ever seen. Um, maybe the most exciting Jordan Devlin match I've ever seen. I think I've only seen like three of his matches, uh, including this one. So this was the tops of that list. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was good. Devlin got the heat for, I think, too much of the match, especially when you consider that Finn Balor is going to be wrestling Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble for the United States, Ch- for the Universal title. Uh, maybe should have been a little, a little bit stronger in this uh, win here, but uh, at the it, same time, though, I feel like you know it. It was fairly easy to tell you, and you could feel that Finn Balor was like he was carrying this. Yeah, he was pull. He was pulling a really good match out of Jordan. Jordan is not. The pieces are there. He just hasn't put it all together, and he doesn't have his own like unique. Uh, style. I call him Balor's mini me because that's like that was the story in the UK tournament is that he is Balor's protege and like he tries so hard to be Finn Balor, but he just doesn't have the same level of ability. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope for his sake that one day he he puts it together and kind of figures out how to be Jordan Devlin and not. Poor man's uh, Fergal Devitt, <laughs> because WWE already has one of those, <laughs> and I don't think he's got a path to the main roster <laughs> until he can kind of figure it out for himself. Uh, but this match was fine. Finn won with the uh, sling blade, shotgun, drop kick, coup de gras, finishing sequence. Um. Like two and a half stars, half a star awarded strictly for the uh, surprise of Finn Balor of all people uh, wrestling on the program. I'll give it. I I give it three. Um, I don't know. I just I was I was fairly high on a lot of these matches. I, I just enjoyed it. I was in it. Yeah, I mean, this wasn't a bad match. I just I wasn't super entertained. By it, I was, however, extremely entertained by this next match. <laughs> Bomber Dave Mastiff versus Eddie Dennis this in a is, no DQ match. This is my kind of match right here. This is the type of wrestling I love. I like a good scientific wrestling match, but nothing warms the cockles of my heart quite like a you know gimmick-filled <laughs> slaughter fest. Like, one of my favorite matches of all time is TLC 2 from WrestleMania 17 because it was just a fucking car crash of a wrestling match. And I love car crash wrestling sometimes. And this was the personification of car crash wrestling. Dave Um, Mastiff is Otis Dojevich, but Super Saiyan. He's He's a Super Doze. Super Steak. Super Steak. (laughs) Um, That's a... I would like to see like a strange bedfellows tag team of Mastiff and Dennis versus Heavy Machinery. Oh my the gosh. The mirror match. <laughs> it's like the the uh, Bizarro Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> um but this match was a lot of fun. They they got the plunder out. They used kendo sticks, they used the steps, they uh used uh chairs, they 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 threw everything at him. Uh, Dave Mast they used tables, of course. Uh, Dave Mastis was a big boy. He 
didn't really no sell some things, but he he got his offense in and t- looked fairly strong throughout the match. But Eddie Dennis, not to be outdone, showed some impressive feats of strength, hurking yes. up Dave Mastiff, who they billed at like three fifty, and I believe that a hundred and ten percent. I think they may have even like billed him at less than his real weight. He is a thick boy. <laughs> Just he's so large, he's and when I saw the table, meatball of a man. <laughs> when I saw the table come out, I knew like they're like we have to put tables in this match, but we have to make sure they break. Nothing would be more embarrassing than having a Japanese table moment in our <laughs> debut <laughs> takeover. How do we solve this problem? We get the Boss, two. I got it. We bring in the largest men on earth, and we, <laughs> we have them do a wrestling match. We have the giant. We have the two biggest motherfuckers we got on this show. <laughs> Their combined weight may just be able to, you know, make a nice little dent in the table. Just their combined pull- weight of one metric ton. <laughs> <laughs> that table broke twice in one impact. That's how. It's so fucking ridiculous it was. Um. This match was a lot of fun. I I really enjoyed it. I didn't know who either of these guys were going into the match. I came out being a fan of both of those guys. That's an effective match. And uh, a great step. Dave Mastiff continues his undefeated streak. And now I want to see Dave Mastiff versus Walter at some point down the line. Walter. I love how that's his thing. I uh, We're going to talk about him a little more. But let me just say... What a what a clear character! I right? like thirty seconds, and I knew everything I needed to know about who the fuck he was. <laughs> yeah, I I had only seen like clips of Walter before, uh, but that the the segment he was in on the show told me all I need to know about who he is as a man and uh, how he would raise his children. <laughs> <laughs> I give this match four stars. I would maybe not go quite that high, but three and three quarters for sure. Uh, with the sauce. I'll give it the sauce, too. With the sauce, yeah. Just uh, drizzle that sauce on there. And then, I I don't know, it, it might have been me, but like maybe it was partially me and partially this match. I don't know why. I like the wrestlers in this match, but this one... Tony Storm and Rhea Ripley for the women's championship felt to me like a trough. It just didn't connect. The beginning was very boring with uh, Rhea getting the heat uh, for a long time, and she uh, she's not particularly exciting in that role. I know she's bigger than most of the girls, and you know that's how they teach you to work from on top, but... Uh, it didn't make for exciting television. And, uh, you know, they kicked out their finishers once each. And uh, Rhea Ripley went for another riptide. Tony Storm reversed and hit Storm Zero for the win. And the title, which really kind of begs the question, what was the point of putting the belt on Rhea to begin with if you were just going to put the belt on Tony at the first opportunity? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um. Maybe they're setting up a feud. Maybe they just, I don't know. It's its a little muddled. I know they did do the angle where Rhea was undefeated by, like, everyone else. Undefeated against everyone else in the roster. She's like, give me some real competition. Yeah. So Tony's like, I'll be back. Sure. Yeah. I don't uh, know what they're going to do from here. Yeah, I don't know who the next uh, contender is going to be. Uh Maybe they should have the run back, you know? Yeah, possibly. Although this is this that would be the third time we've seen this match and it hasn't lit my world on fire either time we've seen it. They they sometimes they just don't have good chemistry. Like they can be two good wrestlers that don't have good chemistry. A famous example of this was uh Edge and Chris Jericho. Both very good wrestlers, but their matches against one another were never really that good. I don't know what it was. They just didn't click in the ring together, and sometimes that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I would give it two and a quarter star. Two and a half for me. Because uh, I don't do fra- uh, smaller fractions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Pete Dunne versus Joe Coffey in a strange match. Mm-hmm. I would describe it as uh, a an attempt to recreate Gargano Almas. Yes, it in felt its, quite in a the bit short. endurance aspect. Yeah, this match went 35 minutes. It did not need to go 35 minutes. It would have been better if it went 20. Um, mm-hmm. The first part of this match was so slow. Um, I can't even tell. It's just boilerplate main event wrestling match uh, up until like the halfway point where they started hitting big moves and, and you know trying to steal each other's moves. And then we had the embarrassing botches where... Uh, okay, remind me. I'm trying to remember. So they're up on the top rope. Oh, is this where they just move. fell? Yeah. Oh, yes. And Joe they Coffey were... slipped. And it would have been fine if they had just let well enough alone and gone on to something else. But they tried it again, and it came out even worse because then they both fell. Right. I remember right after they fell, they got up and they were doing like a forehead. And it was fairly obvious to me that it was um, Pete Dunn like, calling the next few spots. Yeah. And setting all that shit up. They tried it, and it's just... <laughs> you could see the surprise on Joe Coffey's face. Although they sold it well, and I almost, you know, there was it was a half and half thing for me. I was yeah. like, was that actual? Did they Or, or did, they, did they plan that? They could have... Hey. You know, you could have fooled me. Let me put it that way. You could have fooled me. Hey, but, you know, for all I know, that could have been a planned spot. They could have been selling the exhaustion of such a long match. But to my eyes, that looked like a botch. Like, if they had only done it once and they had both fell, then you would have been able to convince me a little easier that it was a planned spot. But the fact they went back to it tells me that right. it was a botch. Yeah, that's um, fair. No, hit... although this is not the uh, Black Mass Mist versus Lars <laughs> Sullivan level of botch. It's not the wind of the Black Mass <laughs> knocking Lars Sullivan to his knees, no. <laughs> Um, but they, hey, I'll give them credit for that. Like, they caught that on a great camera angle where it didn't look like it n- missed nearly as bad as it actually did. Yeah, that's true. So, um, there was, there's a lot of submission stuff. The story, I guess the story of this match was coffee is bigger than Pete Dunn, but Pete Dunn does submission stuff. But the thing about it is that that's the story, but Joe Coffey really isn't that much bigger than Pete Dunn. He's shorter than Pete Dunn. And he's a little bit thicker than Pete Dunn, but he's not yeah, like spawn his fists. So it's to be stronger. He's not like more muscular than Pete Dunn. He's just like fatter. The old uh, Nia Jax problem. Yeah. So they hit each other with everything. They kicked out of everything. Um, Pete Dunn hit a, I think the second or maybe third bitter end of the match, and Joe Coffey kicked out of it, and then he won immediately after by bending his fingers back which holy yeah, flat yeah. finish batman <laughs> just hit the finisher that's why they just call it a finisher don't kick out of the fucking bitter end <laughs> for <laughs> christ's sakes um this match it, it would have been better served if they'd cut like 10 minutes from it um i'll give it three and a half stars i think there's if they ever want to run this back, I think it could be a pretty good match, but I think it's very obvious after what happened after the match where Walter made his debut that uh that is the next match. Yeah. Um three and a half for me too. Uh Walter, yeah, he comes out and like I said, you know exactly what's going on. Like I have I had no idea. I've never seen anything by Walter. I but he comes out and you're like I get it. He's going to be the next guy. And He's a very stern German man with a cold, unfeeling expression. He's a, he's a big boy. Coats his um, ring general on it. Yeah. Um, he's, the, he's the season two anime villain. Where, where Rita. Yeah. Rita's like comes in lord zed comes in he's like rita what are you doing i will command now yeah um 
So I think that's the next match, uh, Dunn versus Walter. And I think that uh, Walter is going to end the 600-plus day title reign of one Peter Dunn. I'd be okay with that. That sounds like a good good place and a good not, guy to... Yeah, not to like diminish NXT UK, uh, but Pete Dunn is going on to bigger and better things this year. He's going to be... He's main roster bound. Um, I don't have that on like any authority. That's just my gut feeling. Probably uh, around the end of WrestleMania. It depends on when this next takeover is. If they have this... UK take by main roster you mean AEW <laughs> no I It'll think just... he's going to do just fine for himself on Raw or Smackdown yeah um yeah I think he's heading up uh so it's it's time I feel to take the UK belt off of him and to get him ready to move up mm-hmm. it's a bigger thing I just had a devilish and awful idea so he's a he does strong style. He does British strong style, and he wears his hair on one side. Shinsuke Nakamura does strong style. And he wears yeah, his hair yeah, on yeah. one side. They just got to put him. <laughs> just twisted Vince logic says put them together on a team, and they'll just be a tag team forever. There are worse fates than teaming with Shinsuke Nakamura. Yes, you could I, be, for example. Bo Dallas, <laughs> oh, former no. NXT champion, second longest reigning NXT champion of all time. He Reduced. might be third now, I'm not sure. But yeah, no, so that's, those are my, those are my depraved fantasies. You fucking degenerate you. Um, so Atlantic I'm going to be, yeah, I'm going to be away, uh, this Thursday. So probably no show this Thursday. Uh, yeah. we'll maybe do a double shot the following Thursday. It depends on how I feel because that will be my first day back and I'll probably be pretty cranky. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's going to be too much this show. Just if if worried about like oh we're gonna miss their coverage. This is the show before the take home show, so right. it's kind of gonna be a little setup to the setup. Um, yeah, probably another. And the take home show, if that's if Kurt is just not feeling it because he's he'll be coming back from his trip. I think what we can do is we'll just do it. I don't know, maybe Friday or something. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We're smart boys. We can record it any time before Sunday, or I guess Saturday. I'll have to be up Saturday uh, because there's predictions on that show and they're relevant to the event. So any time before Saturday, we can do it. Yeah, Friday. If it depends, we'll see how it goes. If I'm mm-hmm. feeling fine, I just need to like push through it so I can reset my sleep cycle. Be like, yeah, fuck, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, anyway, this was a good show. If you didn't catch it. I'd say, uh, you know, find some time to watch it. It's worth the two and a half hours. I think every match on the show was at least good. Um, Mm -hmm. Some were great. Some were a lot of fun. Uh, It was a hot crowd. And uh, I'd say they delivered pretty well for their first shot. And I look forward to the next takeover because I want to see this Walter fellow wrestle. I've heard good things. He's got his own class. He's the Walter Waite. <laughs> ha ha ha. MMA jokes abound. All right. But- so that's going to do it for us. We'll catch you all next time. Peace.